The Herod C auto rifle has some crazy good synergy with the stasis subclass, and today I'm going to explain why it's so good, then show how I was able to make it even better with a Titan build. Now there are a lot of moving parts, a lot of mechanics, and a lot of bugs that this build exploits, so please bear with me as I try to explain all the systems in play. First, I'm showing the star of the video, the Herod C. It's a stasis high impact auto rifle that only drops from the gamut playlist or from Drifter's engrams. Now, the first important perk to take note of is armor-piercing rounds. These make the bullets over-penetrate through targets and stasis crystals. Next is subsistence, where defeating targets partially reloads the magazine. This perk works with the armor-piercing rounds, so if you kill two enemies with one bullet, it will load two enemies' worth of ammo back into the weapon. Then there's the headstone perk, and this is where the gun truly starts to get crazy and break the game. Headstone states that precision final blows will spawn a stasis crystal at the victim's location. Now what makes these crystals amazing is that the way that they're coded into the game, they technically originate from the weapon itself and will take on the weapon's attributes. A perfect example of this is this season's overload auto rifle perk, where if you aim down sights to get the overload rounds on the gun, then get a precision kill, that stasis crystal will stun overload champions when it's shattered. So with that in mind, killing enemies with these crystals will sometimes trigger the subsistence perk as well and partially reload the magazine. It is a bit buggy with that interaction though, so you're not guaranteed to get ammo for shattering the crystals. And finally there is the origin trait, Haka Breach Armaments. This makes the weapon deal increased damage to vehicles, turrets, barricades, and stasis crystals. And just like with the other perks, it counts towards the crystals generated from this weapon so the crystal explosions will do more damage to vehicles, bosses, turrets, barricades, and stasis crystals. Now if you're not interested in grinding Gambit to get this weapon, you can get similar rolls with the Perseus D Scout Rifle or the Crate Auto Rifle, but they don't quite work as well as the Herod C. And there you have a quick overview for this amazing weapon with its very unique roll. But why stop there? I went and cranked up the utility of the Herod C up to 11 with a Titan build. Although you can adopt this to do similar things with other classes, I just liked the way the Titan worked. Now, starting with the Stasis subclass, I didn't use the Glacier Grenade like most people would, but instead I used the Duskfield Grenade. I found this far more useful for slowing down small enemies to get the headshots easier. For the Aspects, I used Tectonic Harvest and Diamond Lance. Tectonic Harvest drops a Stasis Shard for every destroyed Stasis Crystal and grants melee energy when picked up by you or allies. And Diamond Lance is the aspect that gives a stasis lance for ability kills, which can be thrown or slammed into the ground. Now as of right now, the ability is actually bugged and will drop a lance for getting kills with these stasis weapons, such as the Herod C. Now for the fragments, I'm sure a lot of you are already very familiar with them, so I'll go over them very quickly. I started with Whisper of Phaedrins that gives a dramatic boost to stability, aim assist, mobility, resilience, and recovery after freezing a target with stasis. Next is Whisper of Durance, which states, Slow from your abilities lasts longer. For those abilities that linger, their duration will also increase. Now what is fun about this is that it counts Stasis Crystals, Elemental Wells, Stasis Shards, and the Diamond Lance as abilities that linger, so you'll have more time to pick them up. Then I used Whisper of Shards that boosts Grenade Recharge Rate when shattering Stasis Crystals, plus the effect is temporarily increased for each additional crystal shattered. Whisper of Fissures increases both the damage and explosion radius of shattering crystals and frozen enemies. And finally for the fragments, I use Whisper of Rhyme, which gives a small amount of overshield for picking up a Stasis Shard. Now, to keep things concise, I'll go over the exotic armor first, then the combat style mods, then any other relevant armor mods. The exotic armor I'm using is the Precious Scar's Helmet, with its perk Kintsugi. Final blows from weapons with a damage type matching your subclass energy create a burst of healing around you. After reviving or being revived, you gain an aura that provides overshields to you and nearby allies. Now here's another area where those headstone crystals from Herod C being coded as coming from the weapon itself come in handy, because destroying the crystals created by Herod C will also create that burst of healing. And combined with the constant overshields from Whisper of Rhyme, you are very hard to kill. Then for the combat style mods, I used Elemental Light to spawn Elemental Wells when I defeat combatants with the super, which by the way the stasis super does a ton of damage to tanks if you're in Grandmasters. The arms have Elemental Armaments which states, combatant final weapon blows with a damage type that matches your subclass have an escalating chance to spawn an Elemental Well. 
The Elemental Shards mod makes the Stasis Shards count as Elemental Wells in order to make it easier to trigger the other well mods. Well of Restoration grants additional energy to the ability with the lowest energy whenever you pick up a Stasis Elemental Well. And the final combat style mod is Font of Might. Picking up an Elemental Well that matches your subclass grants a temporary bonus to weapon damage of that same Elemental type. Now what is fun with this mod is that between it and the Haka Origin trait, you can destroy stasis crystals with one bullet. And sometimes the game engine gets really confused and will destroy the crystal with the same bullet that created the crystal. It's a really goofy interaction, but it's funny to watch it happen because it absolutely will shred groups of enemies. And now onto the subject of other armor mods and the fun combos those can have. On the helmet, I have two harmonic siphon mods, and these do stack to grant larger orbs of power for getting rapid weapon funnel blows with weapons that match your subclass energy type. And like with many of the other mods, the game gets confused about the headstone crystals from Herod C, and will often grant orbs of power for killing enemies with the crystal's explosions. Now there is a funny loop between the Duskfield grenades, the bolstering detonation mod, and the bomber mod. You see, Bolstering Detonation mod grants class ability energy for doing damage with grenades. Using Double Bomber mods reduces the grenade cooldown when you use your class ability. And the Duskfield grenade does lots of small ticks of damage to enemies, so the grenade and barricade will constantly feed into each other as long as your grenades can deal damage. Then to make your abilities come back even faster, I used Orbs of Restoration, which grants energy to your least charged ability every time you pick up an Orb of Power. Then Absolution comes in and gives you energy to all of your abilities whenever you pick up those delicious orbs of power. Now the other weapons for the build aren't really that important. There are a lot of stasis flavored weapons out there. Uh, for heavy, I'm using the Zephyr Sword from the Dawning event last year. Mine has Cold Steel which freezes targets after a couple hits, and Unrelenting which stacks with the healing from Precious Scars to give even more healing per kill with the sword. Now as for the second weapon, run whatever you like really. I ran Devil's Ruin for stunning unstoppable champions, as well as its ability to briefly stun Alakul the Lightblade after two charged beams. I think Coldheart would be fun next season after Bungie gives it the ability to create ionic traces on kills. So in conclusion, with this build, getting a precision kill or multi-kill with this roll of Herod C will give you ammo back into the magazine, a stasis crystal, a burst of healing for you and allies, a diamond lance, an elemental well, a stasis shard, weapon stability, aim assist, mobility, and resilience, and an orb of power. Then once you pick up everything that drops from getting the kills with Herod C, you will get a small amount of overshield, bonus damage with stasis weapons, melee energy, energy to the ability with the lowest energy, bonus amounts of energy to that ability, a small amount of energy to all of your abilities, super energy, and a faster grenade recharge rate. And there you have it, a build that enhances the Herod C and turns it into a utilitarian monster. What kind of changes would you make to the build? How would you use the Herod C with the Hunter or Warlock? Put it in the comments down below. I love to see how wildly different people will build craft. Thank you for watching, and stay safe out there, Guardian.